the ghost did not know what to do. He ran through the nearest door, went back to the secret room, and lay down. He could not frighten anyone. He was a very unhappy ghost. The Otises did not see the Canterville ghost at night again. The twins waited for him when it was dark. They put a rope across the corridor. They tied metal tins to the rope. But the ghost did not walk into the tins. Only Mr. Otis came along the corridor. He fell over the rope and was very angry. Virginia Otis was also angry with the twins. Can't you leave the poor ghost alone? she said. Why do you want to hurt him? Why do you want to play tricks on him? He has lived here for a very long time. Leave him alone. The twins did not listen, but the ghost heard Virginia's words. The words gave him hope. One afternoon, Virginia went to the library. The library door was slightly open. She pushed the door wide open and quietly walked into the room. There was somebody sitting by the window. It was the Canterville ghost. He was looking at the library window, which was made of colored glass. There were words painted on the glass. He was wearing his best clothes and had combed his long gray hair. I feel very sorry for you, said Virginia quietly. I'm sorry that my brothers were not very kind to you, but you did try to frighten them. Yes, I did. Said the ghost. It is my job to frighten everyone who comes to Canterville Chase. You are very wicked, I know, said Virginia. Mrs. Umney, the housekeeper, told us that you killed your wife. Yes, I did, replied the ghost. But she wasn't very kind, and it wasn't very kind of her brothers to starve me to death. Starve you to death? Said Virginia. Oh, poor ghost, are you hungry? Would you like a sandwich? No, thank you, he replied. I never eat anything. But you are very kind. You are much kinder than the rest of your family. They are rude, nasty, and unkind. Stop! cried Virginia. You are nasty and unkind, too. You stole my paint box. You used my paints to make the blood stain in the library. I never told anyone about it, but now I'm going to fetch my father. She turned to go, but the ghost spoke again. Please do not go, Miss Virginia, said the ghost. I am so lonely and so unhappy. I do not know what to do. I want to go to sleep, and I cannot. It's easy to sleep, said Virginia. You go to bed and close your eyes. I have not slept for three hundred years, said the ghost. I have not slept since I was murdered by my wife's brothers. Virginia walked across the library and looked at the old face of the ghost. It was a sad face. Poor ghost, said Virginia. How can I help you to sleep? Far away in the woods, said the ghost, there is a little garden. In the little garden, the grass grows long and thick. There are many flowers and trees. A nightingale sings all night long. The bird's sweet song is beautiful and sad. The white stars and the pale moon look down on this little garden. It is very peaceful. Virginia's eyes were full of tears. She put her hands over her face. You mean it is the garden of death? she said quietly. Yes, the garden of sleep, said the ghost. It is very beautiful. There is peace and silence. There is no yesterday and no tomorrow. But only love can open the door to the garden. 
for love is stronger than death. Virginia did not know what to say. She listened as the ghost spoke again. Have you read the writing on the library window? Yes, said Virginia, but I do not understand it. Look, said the ghost, read the lines on the window. Virginia looked at the window and read the lines of poetry. When a golden girl shall weep for the ghost that cannot sleep, then the dead at last shall die and in restful earth may lie. The words mean you must weep for me, said the unhappy ghost. Then the angel of death will let me rest. Will you help? What do I have to do? asked Virginia. You must come with me into the darkness. You will see strange things. You will hear strange voices. But nothing will hurt you. You are good and kind. The dark cannot hurt you. Virginia did not answer, and the ghost waited. He had waited for three hundred years. This was the longest minute of all that time. I am not afraid, said Virginia at last. I will come with you into the dark. The ghost kissed her hand. His lips were cold like ice, but they burned like fire. The ghost held her hand, and they walked to the wall of the library. The wall opened. There was darkness beyond the wall, and a cold wind. Voices spoke out of the wind. Go back, Virginia. Go back before it is too late. Virginia walked into the darkness with the ghost. Virginia and the ghost disappeared through the library wall. Virginia did not come downstairs for supper. Mr. Otis sent one of the servants to her room. The servant could not find Virginia, so everybody searched the house. They looked everywhere, but they could not find her. Mr. and Mrs. Otis were very worried. It was a summer evening, and the sun had not set, so the family and the servants searched the gardens before it was dark. In the garden there were many trees and a deep pond. They looked in the pond. They looked in the trees. Then they asked people at the railway station. But no one had seen Virginia. Mr. Otis went to tell the village policeman that Virginia had disappeared. But by that time it was dark and no one could search any more that night. None of the family wanted to eat or sleep. They sat in the library and waited. They hoped Virginia would return safely. They planned to search for Virginia again in the morning. It was midnight when the family decided to go to bed. They left the library and started to walk up the stairs together. Suddenly, all the clocks in the house struck twelve and they heard a terrible noise. Thunder crashed outside the house, and the Otises heard a dreadful cry. Strange music sounded inside the house, and a door opened at the top of the stairs. Virginia stood in the doorway. She looked down the stairs at them. Her face was very pale, and she carried a small box in her hand. Where have you been? Mr. Otis asked angrily. Your mother has been very worried. You have frightened us all. You must never play a trick like this again. Except on the ghost, said the twins. You can play tricks on the ghost. Father, Virginia said quietly, I have been with the ghost. He is dead, and now he can rest. He gave me this box of beautiful jewels before he died. She showed her father the small box. Inside was a necklace made of red stones. 
Where did you get this? asked her father. Where have you been? Mr. Otis forgot to be angry. He was so pleased to see that Virginia was safe. Come, I'll show you, said Virginia. She turned back to the door at the top of the stairs. All of the family followed her. Washington Otis carried a lighted candle. Virginia led them along a secret corridor. They came to an old wooden door which was open. Beyond the door was a little room with a low ceiling. There was an iron ring in the wall and two chains. At the end of the chains was a body. Only bones remained. It was a skeleton. This is the body of Sir Simon de Canterville, said Virginia. He murdered his wife in 1575. Then his wife's brothers shut him in this room. He was given no food. Sir Simon starved to death. His ghost was in this house for three hundred years. But now he has found peace. The Otis family looked around the little room and did not know what to say. Virginia knelt on the floor beside the skeleton and began to pray. There was a funeral four nights later. The Otises buried the body of Sir Simon de Canterville in a grave among the trees. The Otises, Mrs. Umney the housekeeper, and all the servants from Canterville Chase stood near the grave. Behind them were people from the nearby village. Many people had come to the funeral. Virginia carried white flowers. She looked up at the stars and the pale moon and the dark trees. She remembered what the ghost had said about the Garden of Death. A nightingale began to sing. The bird's sweet song was beautiful and sad. Virginia smiled. God has forgiven him for murdering his wife, she said. <laughs>